people see Kevin and they see Kevin on the screen and they go, yeah, he's a real hot boy. Is he cute? Oh, yeah. Ooh, Kevin. Ooh, mm, mm. There are a lot of people you watch perform and you actually think you can do it. Every aspect of a film, Kevin was into and he was concerned about. And when you see Whitney sing, you absolutely know you couldn't do it. I know the person that was concerned about, you know, where he was standing, you know, uh, how the lighting was hitting me or, you know, if the lines were coming out right. She just gets up into rare air, man. Bodyguard marks the motion picture debut of pop music diva Whitney Houston. She stars opposite Kevin Costner as Rachel Marin, a singer-actress whose manager hires ex-Secret Service agent Frank Farmer to be her personal bodyguard. After the second album, I started thinking, uh, yeah, you know, maybe I'll do a movie someday, you know. I didn't have any idea who or what, you know, or any of those things that, that most people know, I guess, when they you know, start out looking for a film or project that they want to do. I had no idea. So, being that I had no idea, I just thought, well, I'll just wait for that right one to come along, and if it does, hey, you're great, and if it doesn't, well, cool, you know. But it did, you know, and um, there was the bodyguard. For me, it was um, the part read, she stands up, she's neither beautiful or anything, but she's immediately recognizable, she's a superstar. And the combination of the presence that Whitney had with never being in a movie made everything worth the risk in my mind. In fact, so much so that I postponed the movie for a year to wait for her. I kind of sat on it for a while, you know, for, for a long while. I think longer than somebody who really wanted to do it would have said, yeah, you know. I called her, I said, I have this movie. You're who I'm thinking of. I'm not thinking of anybody else. You know, it's almost yours to lose or to take. Why don't you read this? And she called me back and she got it. She understood. Something hit me one day and it said, well, you know, Whitney, um, there will probably never be another role like this for a woman, especially uh, a black woman, um, to do again. Um, you know, the character is her own person. She's not subservient to anybody. She's very much in control of herself. Not, not much of her atmosphere, though. She knows what she wants, you know, and she's, she is a diva. So that, that kind of, like, kicked it in for me, you know. I said, well, okay, if I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, and I'm not going to bar none, you know. So I decided to do it, and there we are. <laughs> Despite being a veteran of numerous music videos, Whitney felt uncertain of her acting ability. At one point, she suggested enlisting the aid of an acting coach. I suggested to Kevin when we first started to do this, and I said, Kevin, maybe I should, you know, have a coach and take some acting lessons. He said, no, please don't do that. You're like a virgin, or, you know. <laughs> we don't want you touched. I told her I didn't think she needed one, um, but that it was going to be important that somebody work with her. What happens is, you know, you have the lines in, in acting, you don't realize all the freedoms you have. When we work in the little cafe, it is about eating french fries, it is about drinking beer. You know, you can talk and you don't, people don't always look at each other when they're acting and she gets that, you know. She, and, but, but you have to tell them what's possible. What happened was, she's, she is a quick learner. And these things, she would build exponentially on these ideas. Videos are nothing like movies. You know what I mean? Nothing. Uh, you know, videos are, are, they're quick movies, you know, you can do a video and, you know, you know, it's over and done, but the detailed stuff that goes into movie making is incredible, you know, which videos, you know, you kind of, you know, music videos, you kind of loose with it, you can kind of play with it and be kind of, you know, yeah, you know, but not movies, man, you, you, <laughs> you know, you got to be on your mark. Hit it! You were out there with me when we were like three and four in the morning and stuff, you know. Rachel, hi. Queen of the night, is this your night tonight? I hope so. Good luck, everybody's pulling for you. I'm not a morning girl. <laughs> so that was kind of rough, you know? And I'd walk in and Kevin would laugh at me because I'd be like, hi, you know, how you doing? You know, so you have to get there at six o'clock to be on the set at eight, which is really hard, you know? We didn't have an extended rehearsal period, so, you know, I think that she worked under tremendous circumstances you know it wasn't it was a good environment I think because of how we got along it wasn't a great environment because um, 
you know, in some way I would have even made even more time for her. You can't manufacture chemistry between two people who don't have it. Thank God Kevin and Whitney had it. What you can do is, uh, one, don't get in the way of it, and two, try and help it along if you can. They really did have not an attraction for each other, it's, it's not a sexy thing like that, but there was a chemistry between them as two professionals that I think comes across magically on screen. I liked her essence, I liked her elegance. I mean, when she stands up, I think if you, you remember the first time you ever see Whitney, if you think back on it, maybe you can't isolate where you first saw her, but some people like have this thing that comes along every 10 years. When she stands up and sings, she occupies a place that I think Streisand occupies you know, uh, Diana Ross did. You know, there's fabulous singers that come and go throughout the ages and will, but sometimes when one stands up and you look, there's an elegance that's right there. And that was very appealing to me. Tell me, baby! Every day, we'd go over our scenes, you know, especially if we were just him and I doing it together. Um, we'd go over our scenes, in, you know, intensely. It was like, come on, Whitney, let's go over here in the corner, let's do our scenes, you know. Which, which is, you know, was comforting to me because I was like, yeah, yeah, I love that, you know. So after a while, I just, I just start going over to him and saying, Kevin, come on, let's go do this, you know. Or help me with this, help me with that, you know. I tried to leave them on their own uh, at times at the corner of the set, just talking, you know, talking about the scene, how they were reacting to the schedule, wasn't this tough, wasn't that scene tough that we did last week, how are we going to do this scene next week? Because that kind of bonds two actors together. And Mick was really cool about it because, you know, he understood and he was just the best director because he was sensitive and, and he was graceful with it. It's a fine line between director and actor. You know, you know, as an actor, how much do I cross that line and step into a director's territory? Well, because I've directed, because I've directed a movie, I, I feel really sensitive to what he's going through. And I find that I tiptoe around more than I should in a way. And so I stayed out of the shooting and the casting for the most part. But then as the movie finally wound its way into its final form, I have to make decisions if the movie is, is going correctly. I don't believe in the auteur thing unless you've earned it. And uh, in the instance of The Bodyguard, the, the movie had to, in my opinion, take a couple more steps with, with the available footage, you know, and in, in the, in the putting it together. And that's not an easy decision for the director, and it's not an easy one for me. But, you know, these aren't $30 million Valentines. You know, if you're going to make a home movie, then there's something else. So I, I do step in, and uh, but I do it with, you know, w with not a lot of joy, but I do it. You know, I I have final cut on the movie, and I've I've had final cut on a lot of my movies, and it's not something that I want to give up. So I have to be very, I have to be what I can, I have to be smart about the movies. The Bodyguard was the first screenplay written by writer-director Lawrence Kasdan, who gave Costner his first big break by casting him in The Big Chill, and went on to direct him in Silverado as well. But The Bodyguard script languished on his shelf for nearly 20 years. It's kind of typical in my career to kind of go through people's closets of, of writing, you know. Uh, what were you writing, you know, back then? I, I kind of based my career on stuff like that. It wasn't JFK, and it wasn't, I guess, dances. Or even a field. Give me a bill, then he will come. It was the kind of role that I felt like American cinema has been built on. That enigmatic cowboy, if you will, who comes to town and uh, with only the possessions on his back. You don't know if he's got a mother. And those guys are very, very appealing because uh, you know they have baggage, emotional baggage. You just don't know where it lays. And uh, you know they, these are the guys that traditionally take you through movies. Frank Farmer, Rachel Merrin. Hello. Hi. Wait a minute. Well, you don't look like a bodyguard. What'd you expect? Well, I don't know. Maybe a tough guy? This is my disguise. Mm. Well, this timing's good. There was two things at stake there. One, the movie, you know, uh, what's at stake where the movie's concerned. But the most important thing about that scene was this is Whitney's first moment on screen. Very, very important. It's really important in movie in, in normal terms, how you present a character. You have to be very smart about how you do it. But in this instance, everybody's going to the movie going, well, can she do it? Can she not do it? And you, we start, you know, with her back to us. And then when she turns, and that scene probably, Whitney and I worked on a lot together. When she stood up, she was like, it's like, you know, Betty Davis saying, what a dump, you know.